What's going on guys? It's your boy CBS back with another Destiny video and in today's video I'm going to be uploading the full Taken King reveal stream that happened earlier today. So uh, I'm going to be breaking the stream down piece by piece and showing you the different parts that I found to be the most interesting. So if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. I will catch you guys at the end of the video. Peace. We should have known Oryx was coming. This is bad. Sidekick, check. Roguish commander, check. And then we have the Guardian. I'd say we're ready to get this done. Hey, how are you? I'm Deej from Bungie, your friendly neighborhood community manager. Welcome to the first in a series of live broadcasts we're going to use to reveal some elements of Destiny, the Taken King. Uh, you're joining us live from Bungie today. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to my fellow community manager, Cosmo, who is here in our studio with a live studio audience. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us in the room. Thank you for joining us on Twitch. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the subject matter experts who have joined me on the panel. Uh, to my right and your left is Mark Noseworthy, executive producer on The Taken King. Hello. Morning. Good morning. So tell us a little bit about what it means to be an executive producer at Bungie and uh, what you helped us do on The Taken King. Um, well, you know, I think I can say it as simple as trying to make sure we get this thing done for September 15th. Right? Yeah. Like, uh, and uh, I'm happy to be here today because we finally get to talk about a bunch of the things that we've been kind of cagey about for some period of time. And really, we want to reveal as much as, as, as we can. So really stoked to be here. Good. Glad to have you. Yeah, obviously, we've been listening to your questions, we've been reading them on forums, we've listened to them on you know, convention show floors like E3 and Gamescom. Now we have an opportunity to show off these new systems and to talk about Destiny Year 2. And who better to help us with that than Tyson Green? Hello. Morning. Yep. Uh, so you're a senior... <laughs> so, uh, you know, veterans of the Bungie community will recognize you, no doubt, from numerous Vidocs, uh, appearances, you know, media interviews. But uh, for those who might just be meeting you for the first time, uh, tell our audience what you do at Bungie. Uh, I'm one of the senior design leads. Uh, I'm responsible for a lot of the reward systems and progressions and some other odds and ends, like the Crypt Arc. So you are the puppet master. Your, the, your strings are connected to the Cryptarch's evil, decrypting hands? That's right. All yeah. right. Yep. All right. Well, we'll see what you have in store for us. So uh, you are joining us uh, on another beautiful evening in the tower. Always a beautiful day in the tower. Uh, the setting may seem familiar, but in Destiny Year 2, there will be many new features and systems and ways in which your guardian is going to become more powerful in the Taken King. So imagine, if you will, that it is September 15th, uh, high noon. You've taken the day off from work. You're keeping the company of two friends of yours. Uh, I have two theoretical guides here that are level 40. Uh, they have become an even greater legend in the Taken King, and they're going to Sherpa me through this walking tour of the social space overlooking the last safe city on Earth, and we're going to understand how my dead orbit warlock here is going to become even more powerful as my new adventure progresses. So I guess the best way to do that would be to inspect this character, yeah? Let's look at your character. All right, so the new character screen, everyone. So the biggest change that we're making right away in Taken King is your light level is being brought in and grandfathered in as your character level. Okay. So your level 34 on the left side there yep. is now your character level. I mean, this is what you earn by increasing XP. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a level 34 or a level 32 or a level 30, yeah. any character from year one, when you first log in to 2.0, yeah. we'll grandfather your character in and we'll basically just boost you up to the level that you always have been all through the last uh, last year. So how are you calculating this level 
this level 34 character. We're going to take a look at the gear that's on all your characters okay. in your vault, like just all over the place, and we'll figure out where your best character would be. So okay. you don't have to worry about anything like, you know, logging in the night before and mm -hmm. equipping the right stuff so that you actually are level 34 when you start taking King. Everything in my inventory, everything in my vault. Yep. Put it together into a big mathematical atom smasher. Yep. We determine your level. Pro tip for you at home, don't dismantle a thing before this game comes out because yeah. we're going to take stock of what you have and we're going to determine what level your character is. So how does this go up? So this is simple experience. I mean, you can play patrols, you can do strikes, you can play crucible. Like yeah. anything that's earning you XP is going to bring your level up. So this is, this is just like reaching level 20 was mm -hmm. in year one and, you know, in Taken King, the level cap increases to 40, so you'll be able to level up get access to new gear, new equipment, yeah. and pretty, pretty simple. The key here is that anyone who plays the game, just by playing it, killing monsters, finishing activities, can hit the max level now. Yeah. yeah, okay. So on the right side, we have your light. Yes. So in year one, this was sort of buried on certain pieces of armor, and you never really saw this stat, but it was like the most important thing for you know, getting into the deeper end game. So now this is visible on your top level character screen. Mm -hmm. It's actually just a product of all your gear now instead of being a single stat on like just a couple pieces of armor. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a helmet, for example, sure. you see you've got 190 defense. Yeah. And defense and attack, they both just combine together. It's kind of an average and okay. shows up on your character. So as my light, light level. level is an average of my attack and defense on my entire character. That's right. So, so all of these 190 items, the yeah. average would be 190. So what's bringing me down right now to uh, 186? You might have a bad item equipped on one of your slots or something like that. See, yeah, you just got a ghost shell, which is a bit lower level. And ghosts have light now. Yep, ghosts have light now. Um, your class slot has light now. These are all contributing towards making your character stronger. So there's, you know, there's more, there's more to pursue. There's, you're not just doing a raid for mm -hmm. like one of four slots that actually matter. Yeah. Everything matters now. Everything's helpful for your character. Everything you do progresses you. Everything that you do contributes to a higher level. If I'm a guy who, and I am, filthy casuals of the world unite, if I'm a guy who likes to go out of patrol while I enjoy the company of some friends, if I like to go into the crucible and fail miserably with people who are better at the game than mm -hmm. myself, I will reach that level cap. Yeah, you will reach level 40, absolutely. You always tell an interesting story about what was it, the meme of uh, Forever 29? Yeah, like last year, you know, it, this happened to a lot of people where when light level was the thing that you chased, it wasn't in your control, right? Like you had to get the, the boots, was it, in the raid to, sure, to yeah. level 30? And the difference between level 30 and level 29 mm -hmm. was pretty substantial. And yeah. Now, like, light is a three-digit number, and, and, you know, nine or ten different items can contribute to it. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, what, why is that number so important? So, for example, in this case, in year one, going from 29 to 30, I mean, that was something like a 30% swing in how much damage you didn't took. It was yeah. a big, big difference. Uh, the light is more granular now, mm -hmm. so you can make a little bit of progress. You know, uh, you like to say, it's nice to go on and bump things up by one step. Like, you don't have to wait several weeks for a drop that is not yeah. happening yeah. for you when, so to, like, make logical. progress. There's a more logical path between me and my next leveling up. So yep. as I level up more, as I reach higher levels of, you know, orders of magnitude, what does that do for me? So once you hit level 40, you're capped, mm -hmm. but that's what's going to give you access to some of the better gear that's available. You have a few pieces of this in your inventory right now, so, like, yeah. here's a level 40 item that, you know, is 280 defense. So sure. When you get to level 40 and you're able to equip that, yeah. you're going to see a nice big bump in your light level. Right. So for you at home, uh, that is equipped for demonstration purposes only. You're not going to walk into the tower on your first day yeah. with endgame gear. Uh, these legendaries are things that you'll acquire in playing the Taken King content, but it won't be available to you until you level up to level 40. Uh, here's something else I want to ask, because it looks like you're doing some, some different things here. We still have intellect and care. discipline and strength. Yeah. So... Strength, for example, uh, because your melee ability is unlocked on this test character, yeah. it's showing you what your actual cooldown for that ability is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, discipline and intellect, test character, not unlocked yet. Yeah. But all these will show you how many seconds like your cooldown it actually is, mm -hmm. instead of just being sort of a, a weird percentage number that you yeah. really just kind of had to guess. This has made me really value gear a lot more. Like, it, you know, in, the, in Destiny 1, in the live game right now, um, I... I see discipline, I see intellect, I see strength, 
and it says, that, yeah, it's going to speed this thing up, but I never know how much. So like, yep. I kind of just d don't care about it. But mm -hmm. now I can see, hey, I just equipped this item, and I went from 55 seconds to 48. Yep. And I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I, I love the storm caller, and his new super is incredible. And so I'm going to maximize intelligence. Like I'm looking for gear that has intelligence so I can cast my super as fast as possible, as yep. frequently as possible. Yep. Cool. All right, so what else is new on this screen? I see... Uh the quest tab. Yeah. So let's go, let's head over there. So first let's look at the right hand side of the screen where we got bounties. Okay. So the first thing you'll notice is we now have 16 bounty slots. So that's six more slots than existed before. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd say about bounties is there's a whole bunch of new ones. Like we've updated PVP bounties and PVE bounties with a whole suite of, of, mm -hmm. of new things to do out in the world. All the Vanguard and Crucible bounties are updated. They're a bit quicker to do and they're all designed to be done while you're doing what you actually want to do. So there's fewer bounties which are go to this specific place and do this specific thing, and there's more which are like get solar weapon kills, which you're going to be doing mm -hmm. while you're playing Crucible, you're going to be doing while you're like doing patrols, you'll be doing while you're doing a strike. You can also track the bounties now, which you can see. So, you know, if you track a couple there, and okay. just maybe track two. So I'm tracking these two. Yeah, and if you head back to the... You, you know, can track the, a total of four, yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to track a Crucible one, two. Yeah, and I think that's your total because we have one quest tracked as well. So if you go back to the, yeah. the ghost, you know, go to the main screen, um, you know, pull up your ghost here for a second, you can see the progress towards your bounty right here in the HUD, which is awesome. No, like, switching into your inventory screen and tabbing over and then looking at them individually. <laughs> like, it's right there, okay. the ones you want to see all the time, which is, which is just, it's, it's awesome, right? Ready access, and, cool. And, yeah, okay. and you know, the quality of life there is great. And then if you go back to the quest screen and look at bounties, you'll see two of these bounties have already been completed. One okay. of the key changes we've made here is you can now turn in your bounties from anywhere you are. Yep. So you don't have to go into the tower to turn them nice. in. Immediately you get your reputation and your experience right then and there. Vanguard yep. rep, looking yeah. good. So the left-hand side of the screen here is the quest page. And so we've talked a lot about how quests are going to play a super important role in the Taken King this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the place where you're going to go see what are the quests that I have on offer. And you can, you know, there's going to be dozens of quests. And, it, you know, you, it can actually hold up to 32. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of quests in the game for you to, to take. And you can see on this page right here you have some quests that are from the Vanguard, some are about your class, yeah. you get some from the factions, um, there are, there are, there's of course quests related to the, the core story, mm -hmm. and for each one of these you get to see, um, you know, uh, it tells you exactly what you need to do next to, to complete it, but also shows like you what... the strike that we're going to play next week. Yes, exactly, Shield Brothers, but also shows you what the rewards are. So this quest here, this quest step, A Spark in the Shadow, if you complete this you can see that you're going to get the new Stormcaller subclass. Mm -hmm. So the new subclass in the Taken King is something that you're going to earn as part of a quest line. And so it's a Warlock exclusive quest. Correct. No yeah. hunters invited. Exactly. And, and uh, so part of your daily ritual when you log in to play Destiny, now you're going to check out what the daily is, you're going to look at your bounties, but now you're also going to look at your quest page and see, mm -hmm. hey, you know, what progress could I make tonight? You know, which of these things is just on the cusp of giving me something awesome? And a lot of these quests, they advertise what you're going to get for them, and we're trying to move more of the rewards that you may have had to go and shoot yeah. into a loot cave for in <laughs> year one into actual quests. So okay. this quest, for example, is we'll get a heavy weapon upgrade for doing that. So, you And know, that's a heavy weapon, or that is an upgrade to an existing heavy that's, weapon? That is a new heavy weapon, which will probably be stronger than what you're using. So I complete this quest, I'm guaranteed a weapon. It's a guaranteed virtue from the standpoint of that's getting right. new stuff in my arsenal. Now that's yep. awesome. Yep. Well, taking a lot of the guesswork out of how I get stuff that I want to add to want, my inventory. We want it to be more, more deterministic, more, more driven by player action and player intention, yeah. and not so much just by you know, pure randomness. So if I go do this thing, I get this other specific thing, and this is where people should look to their quests page, they should acquire quests, these are the breadcrumb trails that lead to your guardian becoming more powerful. Yep. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. Looking good. What else do we want to say about this? Anything? Let's move on. Cool. All right. Um, Why don't we check out your inventory? Okay. There's something special in there. So we're adding a new item in the Taken King. A spark uh, of light. Called a spark of light. Okay. Uh, every character who, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> every person who buys a copy of the Taken King will have one of these given to them. Yeah. And what this item is for is you can take a character, maybe a low-level character that you didn't complete, or a new alt that you're interested in trying, one of the new subclasses. And you can boost that character up to level 25. It outfits that character with a set of appropriate gear, and it really is just getting you ready so that you can go in and start playing the new Taken King content. So I'm a brand new character. I've never played Destiny before. I go out and I get the Taken King. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I use this. Uh, where am I going to find this? Uh, this will be waiting for you on your Postmaster. Okay, so, so I create a character. I take it on that first mission. Yep. I learn how to aim down sight and shoot, and I get the basic tutorial. Got to, got to get to the tower first. Yeah, eyes up, Guardian, yeah. and all that stuff. Earn uh, your grenade. <clears throat> earn your grenade. Yeah. Meet, meet the, uh, meet the. What are we calling it? Are we calling it the, uh, the North Ghost, the No Land Droid, whatever we want to nickname uh, the successor? Um, so we go through that first uh, story mission. I arrive at the tower. This is at the Postmaster, but. Yep. I am not personally a new player of Destiny. Obviously, if uh, if that Solar Titan looks pretty cool, and, and it, it does, does, and I want to get my hand on that Hammer of Soul, and I do, uh, for all you Titans out there, I'm about to break ranks and I'm about to join yours and share some time between my Warlock and my Titan. I can create a new Titan, and applying this to my new character, I become a level 25 character. Yeah, it gets you up and running. Okay, so the starting line for the Taken King is level 25. Yep. And this gets us there. And if you've got friends, you know, that want to play the Taken King, and they want to get into Destiny and haven't, like, they can join in on September 15th and play with you right yeah. away, right? And they can still experience the first year of Destiny and House of Wolves and Dark Below. It's there for them if they mm -hmm. buy the Legendary Edition. And it's all questified now. Yeah, but this yep. gives them the option to choose to play with you right away. Okay. Anything else we want to cover in my character inventory screens here? Nope. What about the fact that uh, I can finally see the face of this handsome devil in my inspection screen. Yes, so we think it's really important for the characters to be characters. Like, this is yeah. you, this is your person inside of Destiny. So, yeah. you know, we're showing the character faces uh, inside, inside the UI screens. We're also letting some people do the opposite, where, like, I'm wearing my helmet here in the tower because I might have a cool raid helmet that I really like the look of. Mm -hmm. Or I might regret the decisions I made back in September <laughs> when I when I picked my particular hairstyle. So. I, I, I look like He-Man straight yeah. up. Like, <laughs> okay. I, I am so, Prince Adam, and I thought yeah. that was cool, yeah. and uh, it was cool for a few weeks, and now it's not so cool anymore. Yes. Okay. So a few what weeks else can when you were seven. Yeah. <laughs> well, what else can I do to uh, customize my appearance in the tower? Anything else? Well, uh, try switching your weapon. So the same way I would do just in playing? That's right. I'll check out my shotgun. So you can pick the weapon that you're going to show off in the tower, so if you've got that that cool sniper rifle or you know you've got that cool heavy weapon you can pick that and you can show that off now so nice. it's just a little thing nice okay cool uh, so um, throughout the course of the show we're going to be uh, checking in with our audience how you doing Cosmo doing great so um, in looking at our audience um, what questions would they ask us right now uh, I got a question from fear lies he asked are there any, going to be any new additions to Vault Space? Vault Space. Um, we're going to check in with the vaults as a portion of this tour, right, guys? Uh, maybe. Yeah, that, that might be important to people. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, well, so we're going to defer that question to a little bit later. Exactly. Uh, is there anything else they're curious about? Uh, Scrubkiller69 asks, how do we acquire ghost shells? How do we acquire ghost shells, guys? Well, let's uh, swing by the speaker. Okay. Here we go. Lead the way. All right. Moves the needle. I want to point this out. Check this. The, uh, my footsteps on the stairs. Let me slow walk these stairs. Check this out. It's just, it's the little things. It's the little things. It's the little things. Look at that. It's catching up with the IK. Never missing a step. Nice. Okay. Mr. Speaker. So the speaker, uh, like many of the vendors in the tower, <coughs> has been updated with some, some new gear and some new equipment. Okay. Uh, I can we see that still, there are some things that are familiar. Yeah, we still have the material exchange from House of Wolves, so if you're still sitting on some of those Ascendant shards yeah. uh, and you want to switch them in, you can do that. Okay. Uh, but all the speaker's gear, his equipment uh, down below, mm -hmm. you can see we've updated these, so these are level 40 items now. Mm -hmm. And in addition to providing defense, the class slot armor actually is providing you some useful perks now. Nice. So class armor concentrates on things that help you level up faster. So mm -hmm. in this case, you've got some perks that increase your scout rifle speed, or you can choose to increase your machine gun faster instead. I always do. The, the other things that we also find on these are perks that you know speed up reputation gains. So okay. like increasing your vanguard reputation faster or crucible reputation. So these are no longer just vanity items. That's right. These are actually helping your character yep. become more powerful. Yep. As cool as this stuff looked, I never bought a single one of them in Destiny Year One. Yeah. Uh, they were really expensive. I spent my uh, resources on other things to make me more powerful. Well, you had to wear your dead orbit thing. All I the had time to wear too, my so. yeah. I did have to wear my dead orbit thing every single day. So I never bought any, but I always felt like every engram I had every always turned into one of these, and I was yeah. furious. Yeah. <laughs> furious. 
You mean it didn't turn into shards all the time? Well, no. Okay. I was lucky enough to get an item that I wouldn't put on my arm. Something yeah. must have been broken then. Yeah. Um, so, as far as ghost shells go, uh, the speaker also he has a set of ghost shells because okay. you know you're always bringing ghosts back to yep. him. So he finally is giving some back to you. So ghosts also give you defense, which is contributing to your light. They give you intellect, strength, discipline as well. Yeah. But ghosts specialize in perks that are making it easier to collect things in the world. So. Nice. These rare quality ghosts, for example, have perks on them that mark resource nodes. So when you're running around the moon, uh, this, this ghost, for example, uh, lets you, well, or Venus, says or Venus yeah. uh, this one lets you detect spirit plumes. So that'll just be called out to you and makes it easier to find those. Like a divining rod that whispers to you in the dark of night. Yep, except these ones work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So one thing that's missing from the speaker here is the emblems. So, yeah, yeah, what's up? Where'd they go? So let's, uh, let's swing by uh, another little station okay. that's right nearby. Okay, cool. So all the emblems, uh, along with shaders and ships and a few other things, have been moved on to these new terminals, which you can find in different locations in the tower. Um, we call these collections, okay. and this, this is the emblem collection. So if you crack that one open... I'm just going to access it. I'm sure they wouldn't appreciate it if I were to actually crack yeah. it open. The, uh, so I can see some of the things I already have. Yep, some so of these are grayed out because uh, I still have some, some foraging to do in the House of Wolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are these collections, they keep all the ones that you found, um, and it shows you some of the ones that you haven't found yet, okay. and will actually tell you where they come from. So, so like for, I have to play Vanguard Strikes if I want that. Yep. Um, if you... If you don't have room for an emblem, like if they're cluttering up, you know, part of your vault, maybe, yeah, uh, you can, you can safely just get rid of them now because they're all available right here. So this so. keeps track of what I have acquired over time and lets me pull them out and reclaim them whenever I want to. That's right. Lets me pull out a new version of something I always had. Yeah, and we're doing the same thing with shaders, uh -huh. and we're doing the same thing with ships, and so on. And so on. See what I really like about it. I see it, and it's like a giant to-do list for me. You know, yeah, like the, I, like emblems didn't. You know, I, I I have the emblem I got early on with the N because my name's Nose really, and I've been using that since the beginning, and I, I, I didn't really lust after any because I I didn't see them all, but now yeah. I can see them here, and there's you know yeah. multiple pages, and I, and I'm like, oh my god, I want that, and and now I, I'm given some instructions how I can go find that in the world, yep. mm -hmm. and like I gotta catch them all. That's cool. Know? This actually looks like uh, Cosmos signifier on Bungie.net. Cosmo, I think we found your new emblem. Look, great. Looks pretty sweet. You're going to have to do the Blade Dancer subclass, but you like Blade Dancing, don't you? I love it. Yeah, we noticed. Um, so, uh, how's our audience doing? <laughs> and uh, our internet audience, what else would they like to know? Uh, Taste My Sith asks, could you explain rep changes for factions? How rep do you changes pledge for rep? factions. Uh, what would Executor Hideo tell us about this? Well, let's swing by Hideo. Okay. So I don't always. I'm really a dead orbit man, but yeah, hey, how well, you doing? No, no. no, no hard feelings, no judging here. Yep. So New Monarchy, Dead Orbit, and Future War Cult yeah. uh, have all been updated. So instead of wearing the class armor to align with them, <clears throat> you now go to the vendors and you can accept allegiance with each of them. If you accept allegiance with a faction, mm -hmm. then every time you earn your Vanguard or Crucible rep, doing, again, any of the activities in the game that yeah. give you those, you're also going to earn rep with New Monarchy. Okay. It's not an exclusive thing anymore. You can go and like, do both at the same time and advance okay. them. Being aligned with a faction means that you can buy some of their gear, uh, and because you're earning reputation with them, you also earn faction packages. So All of your year one reputation yeah. uh, carries forward, so if you're, if you're rank 3 with New Monarchy or rank 50 with Dead Orbit because you've been chasing Revenant, um, then you still be that in Taken King. Okay. So you're keeping all those things. So for illustration purposes, you probably want me to accept this allegiance. Yeah, why don't you accept that allegiance? I don't, I don't want, I, I, this is out of character, it's, but. Well, this makes you very uncomfortable. Just, just, yeah. just for the purposes the of education, down. you know, just, I'll do anything for science. So, you know, know, oh, come on. <laughs> You can change your mind later. No, how often can I change my mind? But you can only change your mind once a week. I'm new monarchy for a whole week for now? For a whole week now. So now that you have the badge, yeah, uh, you're aligned with new monarchy. Yes. Um, yeah, very out of character. Yeah. But you can look at some of the gear that the new monarchy guys have. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the new pieces of armor in Taken King are they're bolstered with new perks. Mm -hmm. So the chest slot, for example, uh, used to only really give you ammunition perks. But yeah. 
Now we have some defensive perks in the chest, like this one. Check it out. Um, this says, when you take damage from a solar source, for the next couple seconds, you've got a boost to recovery. So you'll be able to recover, bounce back more quickly from that damage. But there's another choice right below it, which is uh, an armor bonus if you're using one of your solar-based subclasses, like mm -hmm. Gunslinger or Sunslinger. Mm -hmm. So you know you can pick, do you want to be reactive? Do you want to be proactive? Yeah. There's another perk that you don't see on either of these that you'll find on other chest plates that actually will reduce the amount of damage done to you when uh, Burn Skull is active. So you might want to have that solar Burn Skull perk, a piece of armor with that, yeah. for Nightfall in a given week. That's and one, not both. Uh, yeah, so it's, yep. And one thing I like about that is it makes more of the gear in the game valuable. You yep, know, now sure. I'm going to be seeking out a chest piece that does that because you know when Nightfall comes up and it's and it's arc and it's not solar, I want that. And you know we're trying to make more of the drops in the game matter. Like we w want the the um, the items to mean more to you. And and some of these perks are really doing that for me. Cool. So nice. What else? What else? What else do we want to say? Uh, these reward packages, uh, you know, they've always been, no, these are material exchanges. So these material exchanges, uh, these are interesting, these are new to Taken King because these actually let you convert some of the materials that you might have a lot of sitting around yeah. in exchange for reputation. So uh, you've got about as many armor materials as most people are currently sitting on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you want to just cash some of those in for reputation, you can just swing by your faction of choice and, uh, and do that. Okay, looking good. And then, uh, of course, yep. Of course, got they're always going to be a great source of weapons. And we talk a lot about, uh, you know, the weapon foundries. So this is uh, the new monarchy edition of a Soros auto rifle. Mm -hmm. And uh, a stop to uh, a vendor is uh, never complete unless I can inspect their glorious new machine guns. <laughs> so looking pretty. This is actually reason for me to actually do some business with New Monarchy because if there's a mission out there that creates fits and challenges for me and solar perks would help me overcome that mission. Mm -hmm. God. Well, and the faction vendors, um, they some of them even have quests for you now too, right? Faction specific quests? Yeah, in fact, it's the case that if you uh, rank up to certain ranks, there mm -hmm. are some quests waiting for you in there. So talk uh, to me about a promotion. So I get a reward, reward package. What should I expect from that? So the faction packages uh, are much improved in Taken King. Yeah. You're not just going to get a single shard from them anymore. Sorry about that. The uh, faction packages are a guaranteed legendary now, in addition to some strange coins, motes of light. Uh, and then the other thing that we've changed about how they work is there's a higher chance to get things like the shaders or like even the, the emblems shader. now. Good old Revenant, Good like old everyone's Revenant. favorite. Yeah. The important change we made there, though, is that once a uh, shader's been added to your collection, it is taken out of the stream, so a different one will drop instead. So Less duplicates. Yep. Fewer duplicates. You're guaranteed to eventually get the shader that you're chasing. All right. I take back everything I ever said about you, Executor Hideo. Nice to spend some time with you today. Uh, Cosmo, how you doing? Doing good. Uh, what is our internet audience talking about now? Uh, let's see here. Bronzevian asks, will there be any more space in the vault? Okay. We've, uh, we've heard the vault space question. Uh, should, we go, should we go check in with the vault right now, guys? Uh, I think we should stay on target, man. All right. All right. Yeah, we got, so we got, a lot, we got a lot of places to go. Okay. What else, what else do they want to know about Cosmo? Uh, I Have Toes says, what happens to existing Vanguard and Crucible Marks come TTK? What does happen to existing Vanguard and Crucible Marks come Taken King? Well, if we go see Shax, Shax has uh, some stuff for us to check out, and okay. we, can probably, we can probably answer that. Guys, these vaults are right here. Are you sure you don't want me to just stick my head in here real quick? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. All right, down into the Hall of Guardians. Here he is. It's Hulk of a man. He is the Crucible, you know. He is the Crucible. No place for mercy. So the first thing you'll see here is that Shax has quests for you. So not only do we have PvE, you know, cooperative mm -hmm. um, quests, we also have player versus player quests. And these are going to start as, as early as level 5 and carry you throughout, um, throughout your Destiny journey. And so here you can see, and it's got, you know, this is about killing, you know, uh, kills with plus 2 con control zones, and mm -hmm. there's also rewards for these quests. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is, we think this is a really important part of, of the experience because there are, there are people who really binge on PvP and, you know, we want there to be many ways for them to be able to um, experience the game and earn, earn you know, valuable rewards. Yep. Sure. Okay, cool. 
If you go back to Shax, you will notice um, he's got uh, a suite of new bounties. Um, Get ready to screenshot, YouTubers. These are all weekly bounties, too. Yeah, they're all, they're all weekly bounties. And if you complete all five of these weekly bounties, you can complete the final bounty here on the right, which is the true meaning of war, which, as you can see, gives you unknown rewards. Well, we can tell you today they're, they're not so unknown. These are excellent rewards. They're nightfall tier rewards. So, you know, let, you know certainly legendary and a transfer, even exotic. We mm -hmm. wanted PvP players to have you know, an avenue to get those same kind of rewards because, you know, these aren't easy bounties. Right? Yep. This, this is, this is, this is going to be hard to do. Sure. And unknown rewards are still fun. I mean, you don't want to completely remove every element of mystery from Destiny. Oh, yeah, there's, so. there's still some randomness there. But if you do this, you're going to get a sweet reward, like, period, every week. Yeah. And Lord Shax says, you showed them. Or maybe I'll just say <laughs> that. <laughs> you showed them the true meaning of war. Cool. All right. Uh, also, check this out. I see uh, some legendary ghosts. Yeah, so if you open one of those legendary ghosts. Okay. Uh, so in addition to the sensor perks that you saw on the rare tier ones, you've mm -hmm. got you know, more stat bonuses, uh, sensors, um, extractor perks, which just increase the amount of a material that you get. Okay, yeah. And then there's also these perks, which are generating additional glimmer as you kill things. So, Interesting. So you know, here's a perk nice. for someone who likes Picking on about our titans. In I PvP. love picking on titans in PvP, <coughs> especially hunters. Are there hunter ones? There are one of each on Shack, so you'll nice. be able to pick your poison. So between all the ghosts I'm going to collect and all yeah. the armor I'm going to collect with the different burn defenses on it, I'm, I'm going to really want more space, man. Yeah, well, yeah. you're the one who won't let me look in the vault, so. <laughs> so uh, there was a question though about the so legendary going, marks, right? Going back to the question about yeah, uh, marks. What happens to our marks? Vanguard and Crucible marks. So Vanguard and Crucible marks are both being replaced with a single new currency. We're trying to simplify this, uh, make it easier for people to do what they want to do, but still be able to access a lot of the different rewards in the tower. Yeah. So legendary marks replace Vanguard marks, Crucible marks. These are actually account-wide, the same as your Glimmer is. So if you've earned them on one character, you can still use them to buy something on another character. Nice, nice. Uh, these come from things like the Daily Heroic or the Weekly Heroic, but they also come from the Daily PvP playlists okay. and Weekly PvP playlists as well. So this goes back to our original point about letting people play what they want to play and get the stuff that they want to get. I feel yep. like there's a lot of sort of firewalls being lifted where if I want to spend all my time in the Crucible, yep. I can do that. Or if I'm somebody who loves strikes and raids and patrols, but I want that dead orbit gear, you're not forcing me to go in and earn Crucible marks to do that. That's right. There's so giving players a little bit more freedom over their experience. Yeah, you know? we, we, we want people to be able to do the things that they enjoy playing Destiny and okay. you know not feel like they have to do one thing or another. Now, there are still some specific rewards to specific activities. Of course. But, of course. you know... The other thing about legendary marks is you'll see you've got 200 here, so that's the size of your wallet. Yeah. Um, but unlike Vanguard marks and Crucible marks, there's actually no limit on how many you can earn in a week. So you can spend these 200 right now and just go yeah. back out into the battlefield and start killing things and getting more marks. So I've hit the ceiling. I have 200. Yeah. That's as much as I can hold so in my wallet. That's the size of your wallet. But I spend down and I earn again, and I spend down and I earn again. Yeah. And you're never going to tell me over the course of a week you've earned enough. Stop playing. Yeah, you've had too much fun. Go yeah. away. Um, okay. Nice. But the original question was, I have all these Vanguard marks, I have all these Crucible marks, what happens to them on September 15th? On 9.15 when you log in, we'll convert the old marks from uh, the marks to commendations. Okay. So uh, players should find that pretty useful because when they come into Taken King, they'll have a bunch of these commendations waiting for them on the Postmaster. Mm -hmm. And you know, you might be able to like just cash them in and get a, uh, a faction package right away. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll put those in my inventory and uh, the same way we did on day one of uh, the House of Wolves, I take those commendations, mm -hmm. I burn them from reputation, That's right. and I just watch my Vanguard and my Crucible rep yep. go up, I get some of these new reward packages that you Hopefully. were talking about. Yep. There's okay. one other key source of legendary marks, um, which is in the name, yep. legendaries themselves, and so when you get a legendary item, you can, you, know, you can say, hey, I like this, I don't want to equip this. Or you can shard it, and when you shard the legendary item, it actually generates legendary marks. So if you go ahead and shard that item. Yeah, you sure? Yep. You sure? Yep, yep, do it. Oh, whoops. Um, so... Is it because I didn't reach the proper level? It's because it's not 915 yet. Ah, okay. Uh, so legendary armor, the year two stuff that you get from Taken King, uh, actually will produce legendary marks when you shard it. So. If you find a legendary that you're not going to use, uh, you can just, you know, chew it up and use it to yeah. fuel your other purchases. So it's still valuable to me. Absolutely. It's still, okay, cool. I'm, I'm earning 
currency, I'm earning money, if you will, yep. by dismantling things that I have no use for. I can then use that currency to buy things I actually want. Yep. So taking a little bit of that, you know, like that wasteful earning sensibility out. Like, I don't need this, but I do, you know, it always yeah. has something you need. We, we want more of the things that drop for players to be valuable and yeah. useful, even if you actually don't have a use for another pair of legs that, you know, have less power on it. Um, so in addition to sharding them for marks, we have another mechanic that we'll talk about a bit later that, you know, is intended to keep things useful to you. Okay. So let's head over to our site across the hall here. Yeah, the Quartermaster. He, yeah, he also has some new PvP bounties. This time that are very um, weapon focused. Okay. So let's check some of those out. Get ready so. to screenshot and go. So these are uh, these are also weekly bounties, um, and these are just you know switching things up a little bit. Yeah. Our site here specializes in the crucible weapons, and so he's got some bounties that mm -hmm. you know uh, ask you to try out some different weapons. Okay. Cool. He's got his own guns too. Looking good. Very colorful. Yeah. There's a. Uh, a certain color motif going on here, and I'm not sure I recognize it. Uh, yeah, I have no clue where that comes from. Okay, anything else about the Crucible Quartermaster? Uh, you can see that uh, obviously my rank is uh, not zero in the Crucible. Uh, this is a test account. You are in a test environment. My Crucible reputation, my Crucible rank mm -hmm. carries over? They all carry over, yes. Okay, so I may be able to walk in here on day one and just start buying weapons as soon as I have the necessary currency. As soon as you get some legendary marks, yeah, yeah. you have access to all these things. Okay, and uh, obviously the bounties are for the taking and for the tracking on my ghost right away. Yep. Cool. All right, so uh, I guess in terms of where we go next here in the tower, uh, let's go to Cosmo. How's our audience, Cosmo? Great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course our, our virtual audience, what would they like to know? Uh, Slayer Thrall says, I'm always low on vault space. Cosmo, what new man. Listen, you promised. ask me to get questions from the community, and this is what they want to know. <laughs> okay, I promise that we're going to go into the vault before the end of the tour, okay? So let's, let's get a different question. Okay, uh, Jared's ask, what about exotic blueprints? Will that be covered today? What about exotic blueprints, guys? Exotic blueprints, so if you go to your uh, left or your right here, Yeah. So these terminals here, down in the Hall of Guardians, are your exotic blueprint collections. And what an exotic blueprint is, is it's a record of having found one of these exotics in year one or in year two. Yeah. So if you open up that terminal, you'll see the different exotics that you've found and added to your collection. Okay. So every time you find an exotic, uh, the blueprint is added to this collection. Okay. And what these collections are here for is, you know, if you misplace an exotic or, you my know. My dog steps on my dog controller. dog steps on the controller for 10 whole seconds and shards it. My fiance um, thinks I play too much Destiny well, and vengefully, like, you, you don't need this. You don't need this not, light beyond Nemesis. not get into those, those personal problems. Okay, I'm um, sorry. This, uh, this is a place where you can actually just come back here and pull another one of these out of the vault and, you know, uh, get back what you may have lost. Okay. The, I, I like to think of this as like the um, Star Trek replicators, yes. right? But instead of ordering hot tea, like you're asking for Plan C, and you get like a new one. Plan C, mm -hmm. hot. Yes. Yeah. The uh, the other useful thing here is if you've got an alt and you just want to get a copy of that thing for an alt character, you can just go to the blueprint kiosk. So these uh, are terminals. account based. Yes, these are all account wide. Okay. So all of the characters I have on one account can access all of the blueprints gained right. across all of those separate adventures. So let's actually talk a little bit about the exotics themselves. So okay. this is late beyond Nemesis. One of this my is, favorites. This is year one. Yep. Uh, it's giving you the perk that lets you revive people faster. Yep. But you know you have to spend a bunch of time and resources sure. like upgrade, leveling this up, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. upgrade. Yeah, it really only Same. becomes valuable until you get here. Yeah, and even then they still got work to do. Yeah. So in year two, we've actually taken some of the year one exotics, yeah. uh, some favorites, and we've we've upgraded them. We've made them better so that not only can you still get them, but they're improved. So okay. if you so, switch over to this page, so here is the. Light Beyond Nemesis version for Destiny the Taken King. This is the yep. year two Light Beyond Nemesis. Now, I see here there are some other engrams here. There are some other exotics for me to chase, yeah, but we, because I already acquired Light Beyond Nemesis. That's right. Because you have the gonna, blueprint. You're yeah. just going to give it to me. Yeah, so any of the year one exotics that you have found, uh, any of those that are available in year two mm -hmm. are available right here on the 
the uh, the blueprint. So I go and it I does some it does cost some legendary marks. Yeah, I own some legendary. Let's drill marks. in, and you'll see why. Okay. So these are improved not only in level, but uh, the exotic armor. We've taken the signature perk, yeah. and we've moved it on to intrinsic. So. so the keeper of the pack, the thing that lets me revive my friends faster. The reason I got the helmet, the yep. reason why I upgraded that helmet after I got it. That's active now. That's as soon as I right acquire away. the helmet. The thing that made it great is already live. Yep, you can okay. you can try these exotics out much more easily now. And when you level them up, uh, they start at high, the max power, yeah. just like they did in House of Wolves. So we're really trying to make it so that when you get an exotic, you know, you can just use it yeah. and just enjoy it right away. Well, and then you got some new ways to upgrade it. I'm not just making it more powerful. I'm adding new talents to this helmet. Yeah, so there's new talents available on a lot of these exotics. Uh, so this one, for example, is Inverse Shadow here. And right down below it is a new perk that increases the super energy you gain when you're getting heavy weapon kills. Yeah. So And so like, I'm cool. I'm excited about this for my, you know, for weapons as well because I, I have the Bad Juju exotic uh, bounty quest right now and haven't finished it yet. Um, but I'm almost there. I'm going to finish it probably in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And you know, cuz I work at Bungie, I know that a level 40 Bad Juju is coming out in September. Um, and so I'm going to have immediate access to be able to get that thing. You know, yeah. And I'm, I'm finally going to be able to actually use it because I haven't, I haven't earned it yet. But I'm, once I earn it, I'm have the blueprint, and I'm going to be able to buy that level 40 version. And so I'm already spending my, you know, legendary marks in my head. Like that's the, one of the first things that I'm going to chase. Yeah. yeah. So can I go in here? Yeah. Can I? Let's, can I? Let's, let's oh, go in there. Okay. So uh, we didn't want it to be the case that if you found something in year one, yeah. that you had to go and find it again in year two. So that's yeah. why, that's why the blueprints give you access to the updated versions mm -hmm. of any of the year one items. But you're only bringing some of those exotics forward. Yeah, only some of them are coming forward right now. Right, and, okay. But any exotic that we bring forward, yeah. there'll be the updated versions okay. available here in the blueprints. So you can see my collection here. I, I earned Truth. Uh, I zerned Gallerhorn along with lots of people. Maybe we'll give you stats in the Bungie Weekly update. Uh, never really took a stab at Dragon's Breath, but I do love my heavies. so. You know, if you're uh, if you're more of a completionist than me, you can come in here and and gaze upon your treasures, yep. and uh, and then buy back a new version of those. If at such a time, you know, I say, you know what, I want to give Universal Remote a second chance, or yep. uh, you know, I remember uh, back in the day, you know, like Soros Regime, mm -hmm. you know, at the launch of Destiny, first Iron Banner, Soros Regime was an absolute terror. It was the thorn of its day, and then you know it got adjusted, but with the 2.0 weapon update. Mm -hmm. Auto rifles are coming back in a big way. So I always loved Suros. So well, let's look at the updated version of Suros. Okay. Along in. with, again, here are all of these missing engrams, all yep. of these new things to chase, all of these, just you know, imagine, if you will, all of these year two exotic weapons. You know, What's going to be the next Red Death? What's going to be the next Gallarhorn? What's going to be the next Thorn or Last Word? And I got the Suros regime. So the Soros regime here updated. Uh, it's different. Uh, it's tweaked just a little bit so yeah. that it follows what the rest of the Soros foundry weapons do. Um, and for example, in this case, you can choose between these first two Fires perks. Fires even fast. That's awesome. Because yeah. I so. actually liked Soros before I upgraded it, and it you know, was given a slower rate of fire. Mm. So I can make it fire faster. Yep, and then Gives me know. my health back. Yep. I can make it more accurate. That's awesome. Yeah, and check this out. It's back in black. That is sexy. It's like Darth Vader's Ferrari right there. I want it. I want it. And I don't have to go out, and I don't have to worry about it dropping. I don't have to wait for Zur to sell it to me. That's right. It's here. I have the upgraded blueprint. I'm grandfathered in. This is where I'm going to be spending my first legendary marks. Yep. If you found it in year one, we want to make sure that you have it in year two. Cool. Could you just go back in there for a second? Like, I noticed sure. something um, that we didn't talk about earlier, uh, that the attack values on the year one weapons mm -hmm. has changed. Okay. Like if you look at Suros, his 160 here. Well, yeah. Tyson, can you, yeah, can so you talk about that? We, we, took the, we took all the values on the, the attack values and the defense values, and we, we brought them all in line with each other so that you can look at a 160 weapon and compare it to a 160 helmet and sort of know that you're dealing with the same quality of item. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we actually we use the current value that people have on their armor, uh, their light value, which is about 168, and that's sort of where we we set our midpoint, and then we balanced everything around that. So people actually haven't lost any effectiveness. Oh, like absolutely. Sir, you know, it's, it, whatever you can kill with Suros on September 14th, 
hits just as hard on September 15th. Yeah, it's just math. Like the numbers guns, have just changed. Your guns hit just as hard, and your armor is just as good at protecting you. So, yeah. It's like we switched over to the metric system. Yes. Okay. The superior system, in fact. The superior. Well, okay. The superior metric system. That's that's. Keep in mind who you're sitting between. What are you? Yeah. What are you saying? All right. So, uh, of course, we've got uh, our vanguards down here. Uh, I have always been, uh, you know, always been loyal to Ikora. So she's going to have uh, new quests for me to go and acquire my new subclasses. But uh, looking forward to joining your ranks, Zavala. Yeah, I know. I know I'm pretty. One of us. All right. So uh, let's get out of the Hall of Guardians. Cosmo, perhaps you can help us understand where we're going next. A lot of great questions coming in. Uh, TJZ117 says, Vault Space, Vault Space, Vault Space. <sighs> Not yet. Vault space. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. Good things come to those who wait. Good things come to those who wait. That's what the cryptarch always used to say, right? Yeah. Well, let's, so let's, yeah, let's look at the cryptarch for a second. Okay. Uh, only a little change to the cryptarch, uh, but I think it's one that people appreciate. So besides being able to go to him and he actually sell you some engrams now for legendary, legendary. Marks. are they really legendary engrams? They are really legendary engrams. They're not so. going to decrypt to greens. Yeah, we. Uh, I the, follow this guy on Twitter. He's a real pain in the ass. Oh, isn't he? <laughs> they won't turn into shards anymore. Either. They don't turn into shards anymore. So though, that's so. a that's a weapon. Yeah. That's a, that is a that's a. a it might weapon. even be an exotic. So. Oh come on, man! You're setting yourself up so hard with that. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, and then there's always uh, there's always mystery flavor right yep. there. Okay. Uh, my reputation will carry over, in fact. Absolutely. So, so anyone yeah. who screenshots this and puts it out and starts to rage. It's <laughs> cool. We all know that if you're not ranked 200 with the Cryptarch, you're not, you're not doing it right. Oh, cool. well, I guess I'm not doing it right. So let's, um, let's so go talk to one of the characters in the tower that um, maybe didn't, ha didn't get enough love in Destiny 1, and we really tried to boost him up, which is Banshee, the, the gunsmith. You know, maybe you were buying lots of fusion rifles from him, but generally speaking, he didn't have a whole lot for you other than that. And we, we wanted to really change that with, with uh, the Taken King. Okay. So to start here, you can see he's got a suite of field test weapons. These are guns that you can kind of like lease out for free okay. that are, are pretty cool, and, uh, and you, get, you, try, you get to try a suite of different weapons. And they're like weapon bounties. Um, that you take the weapon, you equip it, you go into the world, you shoot a bunch of monsters, you kill a bunch of stuff, and uh, when you've completed that, uh, you earn reputation with the gunsmith. Yeah. So For the first time. That's yes. right. So everybody has a gunsmith zero reputation. This is actually accurate right now. Makes sense to earn reputation with the gunsmith. You have to kill things with his guns. So with the gunsmith, uh, as you use field test weapons yeah. or you complete quests for him, because he's involved in a lot of the quest chains, he'll increase your gunsmith reputation. And what that gets you is access to these, which are the foundry orders. Okay. So once you hit rank one or higher, yeah. you can go to Banshee and look at the things he has available in a given week and pick one or two of them. Okay. So because you're rank zero, you can't accept any right now, yeah. but once you rank up and at higher ranks, you can have more of them at a time. And what an order does for you is it says when the next arms day, which is on Wednesdays, uh, the next Wednesday that rolls around, his delivery will be here for you, and you'll be able to come and pick up the weapon of the type that you chose. So does this, this coincides with the weekly reset? Uh, it's the day after, in fact. The day so, after, okay. Yeah. So Wednesday is going to be new gun day in the Crucible. That's right. So again, this is another deterministic way to get something sweet in the yep. game. Yeah. You, you can look at what he has available, and you can pick the ones that you're interested in. So the, yeah, in. these aren't engrams. I'm actually, if I buy this, I'm actually going to get a Hakka... Jin, Jin Kugo D. Kugo D. Okay, good. I, I, th I thought it was pronounced Hekka. Hakka? Hekka. Actually, there's a huge culture war at Bungie right now between, uh, you know, the, the Dutch and the Germans. Yeah. So if you, it depends on who you ask. Uh, Hakka. History repeats. Or Hekka. Itself. Or, yeah, so I don't know. I guess we're just going to have to have that be potato and potato <laughs> in the world of destiny. Um, so I can get... Uh, and the, the, this uh, this stock will refresh from week to week. Yeah, every week he has a different so set of orders available. That'll and be a conversation point, right? Like, yep. I really hope for Arms Day he has X, Y, or Z. And then, uh, of course, we've always had the, uh, you know... All the consumables, too. All the consumables, telemetries, ammunition. So, Tyson, so, last week you already you already did this, right? Yeah, actually, I have an order ready on my character, so... Let's check it out. I can just go to the gunsmith here, and when I talk to him, he'll just pop up. Here's my order. So my order's arrived. It's a Suros DIS-43. Scout rifle. Nice. Scout rifle. And I'll just take that weapon. You know, 
go up here and crack that one open. And just like the other, uh, the Soros regime we were looking at, Soros weapons, they have uh, perks that let you choose and customize the behavior a little bit more. Um, you know, rodeo and then basically like the Soros weapons, you want to tweak them to the way you like them. Sure. Or so I say I don't like it, I'm going to dismantle it, I'm going to get some marks and I'm going to go buy my Soros. Yep. Yeah. And so th there's a talent on this screen, and that's been a lot of screen you've been avoiding. Why don't we talk about that? So this is the Infuse, uh, the node. So all the year two legendaries and exotics, they have this node on it, which is basically the, the replacement for Ascension for these year two items. And the way Infuse works is you can take a weapon like this one. Yeah. And, you know, maybe this is my favorite weapon. And I really like this one, but it's getting long in the tooth because I'm getting some raid drops that are higher power and so on. Well, I can open this up, and what Infusion lets you do is say, I'm going to take a more powerful weapon like this 290 here, mm -hmm. and I pay some, some currencies, some parts, and I can consume this weapon to make this weapon stronger. So now this is a 288, and I can keep walking these weapons or pieces of armor up and keeping them current, because we're really trying to deliver on people being able to find things that they're excited about mm -hmm. and keep them and customize their character, keep them with them. Well, this is a Destiny Year 2 feature. That's right. This these, works on Destiny Year 2 weapons. That's right. These are, these are found on all the Year 2 weapons and all the Year 2 armor, sorry, Legendary weapons, yeah. exotic weapons, yeah. legendary armor, exotic armor. So this allows me, if I, if I get a legendary item that I really like, but might be medium level in terms of its attack or defense, yep. and I, like, I, I either I like the way it looks or I like the talent combination on it, I can continue to pull this thing forward by right. like, essentially using other, other items, other higher power items as fuel That's to, right. to upgrade this thing. Yeah, you can, you can use higher level legendaries. You can even use higher level blues if you find them yeah. as fuel to make your legendaries and your exotics stronger. So this is another way it's going to let people look different in the end game. That's right. Right. So is there like a sacred altar where we can bring our guns and do like a ritualistic chant as we sacrifice them to infuse the guns into other guns? Well, there is a sacred altar where you'll be storing a lot of these guns because if you've got a lot of projects on the go, well, you know, where are you going to keep those things? Cosmo, where do you think we're going to keep those things? I assume uh, in the vault. Should we go to the vault, everybody? Yeah. All right, let's hear it. Come on, vault space, vault space, vault space, vault space, vault space, vault space, vault space. What are you doing? You done? Yeah, All right, I'm, my turn. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> so, vault space. What about it? We've doubled your vault space. Double it. So. For weapons. Double the vault space for weapons. So, so here are your tabs up here in the corner. Yeah, double your vault space for weapons. These are your pages. We've pageified the vault space. And actually a little bit more than doubled for armor. Okay, so I tab over for the armor screen. Also 72 slots there. 72 slots for armor. Yep. Uh, I don't have enough because well, I like my dead orbit armor and that's all the armor I need, okay? Okay. And then... And the general is the same size, but the thing that's going to help you out here is I'm all those gonna, collections. Yeah, I'm going to put all this stuff in those collections. That's right. You yeah. can pop those emblems and those shaders and even vehicles or ships. Yeah, and sure. just really use this for materials, for example. Yeah. Or I see uh, jack lights there, which I'm sure a lot of you still have in your, in your vault. Sure. I would, uh, yeah, I'm saving that for Halloween. Yep. Cool. What else, can, what else is there to say? I mean, what else is there to do in the tower? How does... How does every visit to the tower culminate? Well, it's not a visit to the tower without a dance party, right? All right. Let's be dancing. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I'd like to thank our live studio audience. Uh, please, again, join me in thanking subject matter experts Mark Noseworthy. <laughs> Tyson Green. Community Manager Cosmo with your questions. And uh, I'm Deej from Bungie. A couple of uh, programming notes. Uh, next week, the conversation about the Taken King continues. Uh, we're actually going to fire a few shots in anger at the Cabal. We're going to infiltrate the Dreadnought, and we're going to fight the Cabal in enemy territory. So please join us as we play a new strike. 
Special community guest Mr. Fruit will be on hand to lend some of his covering fire. And uh, a new reveal, uh, this Friday, uh, Crucible designer Lars Bakken and myself will be journeying to Los Angeles to host a tournament in the Rift Crucible mode that we debuted at E3. So follow us on Twitter, at Bungie. We'll give you the details. Uh, our hosts are going to be Red Bull in their own gaming studio. I'm calling out some of the more competitive members of the Destiny community who are going to be combatants in this affair. So Holtzman, N. Kutch, K.J. Hovey, M. Tasht, Datto, Flamesword, Triple Wreck, and Fizzer. You've been officially called out. We'll see you in Los Angeles. May the best guardian win. I'm Deej from Bungie. We'll see you again real soon. And we thank you so much for joining us today. That's it. We're out. What are you waiting for? Do it! Yes, you can!